1960s had a lot of horror genres from thriller to creeping terror to outright, uh, you know, uh, villainy. But John Walker, a great follower of the channel, wanted to mention this movie as part of his request. Thank you, John. Plague of the Zombies made a lot of money to box office. It really, really was a groundswell hit, even though uh, it was trying to be people were trying to ban it in certain territories. Now, the 66 British horror film uh, was directed by John Gilling and started uh, starred Andre Morel, John Carson, Jacqueline Pierce, Brooke Williams, and Michael Ripper. The film's imagery, imagery influenced many later films in the zombie genre. Now, this one in a Cornish village in August 1860, the inhabitants of the town are dying from a mysterious plague that seems to be spreading at a big rate. Even a local doctor cannot combat the disease. Alarmed, the, the doctor, played, uh, called Peter Thompson, sends for outside help from his friend and former mentor, Sir James Forbes. Accompanying Sir James are his daughter, Sylvia, a childhood friend of Peter's wife, Alice. As Sir James and Sylvia arrive in the village, Sylvia deters a group of rowdy fox hunters from killing a fox. Shortly after, Sir James and Sylvia encounter a funeral procession in town, which is interrupted by the fox hunters who come to harass Sylvia and intentionally misleading them. In the melee, the pallbearer dropped the casket over the side of a bridge, revealing the, revealing the corpse of John Martinus, a really dis, recently deceased man. In an attempt to learn more about the disease, Sir James and Peter attempt to disinter the corpses that were recently buried and are frightened upon finding the coffins empty. Meanwhile, Sylvia is, is a cast harassed again by the fox hunters while walking through the woods and chased into a manor house owned by Squire Clive Hamilton. The hunters humiliate Sylvia in what appears to be a preambulatory rape, but are stopped by Squire Hamilton, who chastised them for harassing her. As Sylvia departs the house, she encounters a gray-skinned man near an abandoned tin mine head frame and watches in horror as he throws Alice's lifeless body onto the ground. The following morning, Sylvia leads her father and Peter to location where they locate Alice's corpse. Now, police accuse Tom, the brother of John Martinus, of killing Alice as he was found sleeping in a drunken stupor near her body. Tom denies this and claims he witnessed his deceased brother walking near the mine. An autopsy on Alice shows no sign of rigor mortis, and even stranger, blood smeared in her face is determined to be of animal origin. Sir James knows uh, of a bandage, bandages slash above her wrists, which Peter says she sustained on a piece of broken glass days before. Later that evening, Hamilton pays Sylvia a visit. Purposely, Hamilton manages to shatter a wine glass, and Sylvia happens to cut her finger on one of the sharp edges of the glass. Secretly, the squire conceals a piece of the bloodstained glass into his coat pocket and departs. Now, the next day at Alice's funeral, Sylvia begins to feel faint. True further investigation, Sir James and Peter learned that the squire lived in Haiti for several years and practiced Haitian voodoo rituals, as well as black magic. Meanwhile, Squire Hamilton, now with a vestige of Sylvia's blood, has begun using his voodoo magic to lose Sylvia into the dark woods. She is led to an abandoned tin mine by an army of walking zombies for a voodoo ceremony that will transfer her into one of the walking dead. It is revealed that Squire Hamilton has been turning the locals into the walking dead in order to create workers to mine the tin and may make money off it, sort of like an anti-union guy. Now, when Peter follows Sylvia to the mines, Sir James investigates the squire house and finds some small figures in coffins the squire uses for his voodoo. After a struggle with one of the squire's henchmen, uh, the room is accidentally set ablaze. Sir James barely managed to escape this after threatening a servant who notices the inferno for information on the mine. He races to the mine to join Peter, while in the mansion the figures in the coffins catch fire, causing their zombie counterparts to do the same and go crazy. Using the distraction caused by the burning crazed zombies, Sir James and Peter rescue Sylvia and flee from the burning flames as he listens to the angry screams of Hamilton and the zombies. Thus the plague is ended. Now, David Peary compares this movie to a reptile in a bold concern, small Cornish communities threatened by a kind of alien and inexplicable plague, which is imported from the East via corrupt aristocracy. Bodar, by implication at least, finally, and colonial. Now, scholar Ruth uh, Hayholt notes in an article in the Hellbore magazine that both the reptile and the plague of the zombies are part of a tradition that associates Cornwall with exotic and the foreign. Cornwall represents the non-English within English, the foreign at home. So the movie goes at a very quick pace. Uh, most cuts of the movie are around the 90-minute uh, the mark, or at least the UK one is. Now, 
Uh, production on this film began on the 20th of July, 65, at Bray Studios. It was shot back-to-back with the reptile using the same sets. A Corny's Village created on the back lot by Bernard Robinson. Pierce and Ripper also appear in both uh, films. Now, the film was released in some markets as a double feature with Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Now, the film needed to earn 1.5 million rentals to break even and did make 2.34 million, making um, a soft profit. Now, uh, according to uh, certain viewers, including the Monty Phil Bolton, this is the best hammer horror for quite some time, with remarkably few lapses in crudity, which is usually part and parcel of this company's work. Now, uh, in, the, in the Hammer story, the authorized history of Hammer films, the author wrote, much has been said of the plague of the zombies' influence on the genre landmark, Night of the Living Dead, made in 68. This was a unique and shocking experiment pushing the parameters of Hammer horror. The Plague of the Zombies deserves greater recognition in its own right. Now, it has an 83% approval rating on uh, Rotten Tomatoes based on 12 reviews. Now, Shout Factor released the Blu-ray of this in 2019 with brand new commentators from filmmakers Constantine Nazar, Ted Newson, and film historian Steve Haberman. Now, a novelization of the film was written by John Burke as part of the 67 tome Second Hammer Horror Film Omnibus. The film is also uh, adapted in a 13-page comic strip for the October 17, 77 issue of the magazine House of Horror. Now, it was drawn by Trevor Goring and Brian Boland from a script by Steve Moore. The cover of the issue featured a painting by Brian Lewis of a famous scene from the film. Now, in the first season of Amazing Stories, Spielberg's uh, you know, uh, pleasure project, uh, in the episode Mirror Mirror, the cemetery scene film is used to portray a clip of Sam Watterson's character horror film being shown by Dick Cavett. So, just like Bond Quantum in the recent years, zombie movies have a cultural and social significance, and this was considered, again, probably one of the better or best British zombie movies of all time. A must-see. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Don't forget, John, thank you for your efforts. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.